Hi there, welcome to my first video in a second series of videos. This one focusing on what I'll call intermediate uh, Minesweeper strategy. I did a five video series on beginning Minesweeper strategy, which if you haven't seen and want to check out, I will include a link up above. And in this series of videos, we're going to talk about disguised patterns, uh, two-dimensional extensions of the basic patterns, um, different kinds of corners and how they can be analyzed, um, and a couple other things. In this video, we're going to just work on disguised patterns because there's almost an infinite variation in those, uh, so you can't necessarily memorize all of them, but I'll show you some common ones and hopefully help you figure out how and when to look for disguised patterns. So let's jump into it. All right, this is hopefully the most basic hidden uh, or disguised pattern that we can find. So this one on a corner, again, should be just a red flag, literally, sorry, um, that that's a mine there. Now, obviously there's lots of other stuff we can do with uh, the basic strategies we've already gone over, but for now I want to focus on this one and this three turns out that it's not really a one and a three. Obviously that's a three, it's a red three, but we can think of it like it's a green two. And this is why. It's already touching one mine. We've got that squared away, that flag is 100% a mine, so we can pretend like that's a zero, basically, and this is just another numbered square, and that's a two, because it's touching one of its Mines there, and of these three left that it's touching, two of them are going to be mines. So it's effectively a two along a wall here with a one next to it. Hopefully you remember that old one, two pattern along a wall. If that's a one and that's a two, then as we went over before, that one is going to be a mine and that one will be safe. It's the exact same logic we used. It's literally a one, two pattern, except that two is disguised as a three. So that's the basic idea. Um, it comes up a ton where you can see a three or a four and it's really a three or a two um, or vice versa, whatever it is. Well, a two can't be disguised as a three. They can't go up, but uh, that's the general idea. Um, hopefully that first one made sense, I'm going to show you a couple more so that you can get more of a hang of it. All right, uh, here's another great hidden disguised pattern to look at. Uh, similarly, we have this one on a corner that we quickly marked as a mine, and now this two here is already touching one mine, and of these three left that it's touching, only one can be a mine. So we can pretend that that's a one and that this square just kind of doesn't exist and we've just got a wall here. Uh, we don't know exactly what number it would be, but we're only looking this direction, so it's okay. This is a one uh, up against a wall next to a two. Again, one, two pattern. What does that mean? Uh, if you've got a one here and a two here, then the square past that two is going to be a mine and the square in front of the one, and remember this is a disguised one, it's gonna be safe. One, two pattern, this one is just disguised as a two. It's already touching one mine, so uh, we can pretend like it's down one mine and it's been bumped down to a one, and now we have a one, two pattern along a wall, same logic. Now going the other direction, obviously we could do the same thing. We have a one, two pattern and we could mark that as a one, and that one's safe, which we've already uh, marked as safe coming from this way. But even better, we have, if you notice, this one, this two becomes a one, and now we have a one, two, one pattern along a wall. So not only do we know that one's safe and that that one's a mine, we also know that this one's a mine and that one and that one are safe. Remember, one, two, one um, pattern, you can just put mines right under the ones and that one will be safe, and that one will be safe. This two here was just a disguised one because it was already touching a mine, so you can kind of uh, consider it 
uh, gone and just bump this one, uh, this square down one so that it becomes a one. All right, here's a good tricky example of a hidden pattern. This two, again, is touching one, so we can consider it a one. Uh, and this two is also touching one mine, so we can consider it a one. Now, what does that help us with? If we have a one one next to each other, and they're along this wall, and we have uh, what I like to consider an effective uh, edge of the board here, just meaning that none of these are in play uh, or unknown, then we can pretend like none of them exist, and that's a one. So now we have a one one, uh, along a wall, up against an edge, and again, that was the first pattern we talked about, that means that one is safe. It's weird, because these are twos, obviously, and it's not easy to spot at first, but if you just think of seeing that two already touching one, and that two already touching one, just bump them down both, uh, one more, so that they're like blue ones in your mind, and apply that one one pattern against a wall and up against an edge. All right, as I mentioned, there's not literally countless because, you know, we're working with a finite space, but so many um, possible disguised patterns, I uh, certainly could not feasibly go through all of them with you. Um, it ultimately really comes down to just getting used to uh, looking for these things and thinking about them and practicing. But uh, there's one more I want to show you, and it's right here. We have a three, and it's already touching two, so we can bump it down two, so that that's now a one, a one disguised as a three. So now what do we have? A one, two, two, one along a wall. Hopefully you remember that pattern. It means that that one and that one are both mines, and both of these are safe. That one we obviously already knew, but that one we learn is safe, and both of these are safe. So we can open all of those, we had a one, two, two, one disguised as a one, two, two, three. And that three can be considered a one because it's already touching two. So for purposes over this way, it's just a one. Hopefully that all more or less makes sense. Um, like I said, it's kind of hard to get used to, I think, at the very first, but uh, try it. Uh, see what you can do. It might even be useful to try it when there are some easy uh, basic ones you could uncover, like, you know, these, but then you could say, oh, well, we consider this two a one. Now we have a one one against a wall, uh, but it's not up against an edge because we don't know what that one is yet. So I can't do anything there, but you thought about, you know, how this one could be considered a one. It's just unfortunate that a one one along a wall can't do anything. But, um, sorry, we don't know what either of those are, that's why, uh, partly, uh, that's not uh, considered an edge of the board. But again, you can think of that two as a one, and it turns out there's not anything we can do here, but try thinking about those things, even if uh, there are some obvious minds that you can go after in other places. It's very helpful. Um, and just to say goodbye, here's a one and a two, and that two's already touching one, so we have again another one one along a wall, and that one is safe. So if that made sense, great. If not, keep practicing, and feel free to leave me a comment, uh, ask any questions, um, ask me to go over anything that was not clear. But uh, until the next video on two-dimensional extensions of basic patterns, I hope you have fun playing Minesweeper.